So all my attention now is on preparing for autumn, winter and spring and I try and get one bed cleared and replanted a week from now until about the second week in October when we pretty much finish uh, until you know spring. Um, but uh, yeah today is the turn of the second early strawberries and I also take runners for the first early strawberries which I grow in the polytunnel in hanging baskets. So I'll show you basically how I do that and I've also got a little ebook uh, all about how I grow strawberries and you can find the link to that in the description below and that talks about all the different types of strawberries you know so first early strawberries, second early strawberries, early main crop, main crop and late crop and um, yeah so we grow like quite a lot of strawberries we really love them so yeah I'll show you what I'm up to. So I'm going to work my way through this strawberry bed today and take off all these top leaves and try and find a good dozen runners which I use for my polytunnel early strawberries. So when I'm doing this I just do it with scissors and I just snip off the worst um, of the top growth and when I've got a clump like this I'm kind of looking maybe I might split this clump so I'll leave a few leaves on for the part I might split off and I'm basically just trying to get a good clear space where I can find the best of the runners that have self-rooted and then I'll dig those runners up and pot them on and just give everything a weed and get rid of all these dead leaves and get rid of all this mare's tail and all that sort of thing just so I end up with a nice clean bed and as I say about 12 runners I'm generally going for self-rooted ones there's loads of self-rooted ones in here um, so this should easily be uh, 12. I don't want any more um, strawberry plants in here than I've got uh, so I think I've got nine plants per square metre and that is more than enough I mean I'm overwhelmed with strawberries um, in this bed for eating fresh so that's phase one kind of complete so I've cut off all the big clumps the nine big clumps all the leaves around those and what I need to do I can see everything now I can see what's going on so now I'm going to pick the best of the runners ideally not ones like this that just left a line on the top of the compost but ones that have rooted nicely on their own and they're in pretty good condition uh, some of them I might need to keep attached to their parent plants but most of them I think are fairly well rooted in their own right so I'll just dig those up and pop those on and you will see, you know, the internet awash with videos about how to do strawberry runners. I'm not going to repeat that now. And I'm also not going to do it, as I said. I'm going to take these ones that have rooted on their own, like this one. It's well rooted, you give it a bit of a pull. Um, I don't want it. And there's lots of those kind of stuck around the edges of the bed. So it's a lot easier to do that than it is to... Uh, get your little bit of wire and you know root, root a runner while it's attached to the parent plant in a separate plant pot in this bed at the same time um, yeah if you can just pot them up it's just so much easier so I've got 15 little plant pots here and these are just spent carrot compost so they should be fine I might uh, water them with something with a bit of nitrogen in it once I've potted them up, so the edges of the bed always seem to be the best place to find the good runners. I've just dug this one up, that's exactly what I'm after. I'm going to leave this leaf on it for now and uh, obviously cut off these runners that are coming off the runner. So there we go, that's all finished. So I did find some really nice big um, runners, so I put those in these big pots and as I said these are all going in hanging baskets in the polytunnel and these I've just put in the little pots the little runners and I have just left just a few runners around the edges you can see just in case I lose any of these that I've potted up I've got some spares and I will pot these on into their hanging baskets about October time probably and, uh, and then we're all done 
So I'm going to give those a good water now. So I just sprinkle a bit of blood fish and bone over the whole bed because it's had a bit of a trauma. And then I just water in with uh, just a bit of uh, fish emulsion and seaweed meal. And that just gives everything a little bit of an extra boost. So it all recovers nicely. And I'll come back and give everything a tidy up again in the autumn. Uh, that's the time when I'll be planting the garlic, which kind of goes in every gap. So you get quite a lot of garlic in here, actually. I don't know exactly how many, but uh, I should imagine something like 36 cloves. So I've just been watering my peppers and under these low tunnels. So they're like this one and that one over there. And I've been patching them up because uh, they certainly get some hammer and so I use this uh, polytunnel repair tape and I patch them up so many times so it's definitely worth getting some polytunnel repair tape if you haven't got any as we head into winter and uh, these are five years old now I think and they've definitely done good service but uh, this plastic even though it is meant to be horticultural grade UV stabilized it just doesn't last very long with all these sharp edges of the wood that it's kind of bashing up against over time and obviously I prop them onto each other and all that sort of thing but uh, let's just water in the peppers they look absolutely fantastic this is the first time I've grown these and these are long as you can see, a long yellow ringo. I think the biggest ones that I'm growing this year. Fantastic. And continuing the yellow theme, I've got yellow California wonders, and they're not so bad. And plenty of just red California wonders as well. So I've just been watering my outside carrots with nematodes. And I just popped in here to take a look at these, which are the carrots we'll be eating in April. And I'm really pleased that uh, they just started germinating. So that is really fantastic news. I keep these in the polytunnel from now on, cut the tops off about November time. And uh, yeah, so, and then they just hold in the uh, compost until we need them in April. And that's when the outdoor beds finish and get replanted with the spring crops. So I hope you liked that quick video. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.